ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் மை சின்சியர் தேங்க்ஸ் டு அவர் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் கேட்குதா அன்பு சார் கேன் யூ கியர் அன்பு சார் எஸ் சார் எஸ் சார் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் ஐ சப்போர்ட் மை சின்சியர் தேங்க்ஸ் டு அவர் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் கலசலிங்கம் குரூப் ஆஃப் இன்ஸ்டியூஷன் ஃபார் அக்செப்டிங் ஹோல் ஹார்ட்லி டு கண்டக்ட் திஸ் ஃபிஃப்டி ஃபோர்த் இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் விர்ச்சுவல் லேர்னிங் சீரீஸ் வித் பிளஸிங் ஆஃப் அல்மைச்சி அவர் ஃபவுண்டர் கல்வி வள்ளல் தெய்வத்ரு தி கலசலிங் and with the support of our chairman ilai vallal dr s sridharan sir uh, for the uh, 54th international virtual learning series behalf of uh, hcp for this fourth uh, international virtual learning series uh, we are uh, very proud to have an eminent uh, researcher scientist veteran and honorable uh, resource person thank you thank you sir uh, dr uh, நாகேந்திரன் தர்மலிங்கம் இன்ஃபெக்டிவ் டிசீஸ் டிவிஷன் இஸ்லாண்ட் ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் அண்ட் ஆல்பர்ட் மெடிக்கல் ஸ்கூல் ஆஃப் பிரவுன் யூனிவர்சிட்டி யூஎஸ்ஏ டு கிரேஸ் திஸ் அகேஷன்ஸ் இட் இஸ் ஏ கிரேட் பிளஷர் ஃபார் ஆல் ஆஃப் அஸ் தட் ஹீ குட் ஃபைன் டைம் டு பி வித் அஸ் இன் ஸ்பைட் ஆஃப் ஹிஸ் பிஸி ஷெடியூல் ஐ டேக் திஸ் opportunity to convey my sincere thanks to uh, you and your esteemed uh, university uh, for accepting our request uh, despite of your uh, busy schedule for being a valuable part of this session uh, welcome sir welcome dr nagendran sir thank you sir thank you very much welcome sir uh, your uh, prestigious uh, presents a great motivation inspiration for entire student community sir once again i welcome you sir next i welcome all the professor uh, faculty members and my dear enthusiastic students for today's session my dear students uh, this session uh, hope will enrich your knowledge and update you about the drug re proposing to compact infective infectious diseases uh, uh, this is the first and uh, foremost needy for your career all the very best my dear students uh, once again i welcome you all uh, thank you thank you dr nagendran sir thank you sir please you are welcome most welcome sir you are the most welcome sir thank you thank you okay um good morning very good morning one and all uh, sir anbu sir can you see, uh, see my screen yes sir okay so i just want to make sure everything is all right okay uh, good morning um, respected uh, principal and uh, professors uh, fellow colleagues and uh, all the students uh, it's my great honor to be a part of this session and uh, i'm really happy to present the data and then the research the sources what i am having in in my i mean the acquired uh, during the tenure you here in this country so uh, myself as as uh, principal mentioned uh, myself uh, dr nagendran tarmalingam um, basically we both uh, sharing a similar uh, background uh, obviously i'm a paramedical staff initially i started my career as a medical lab technician i just finished my uh, one year of um, certificate medical lab, medical lab technical course in uh, madurai ultra college of pharmacy and then i did my bachelor's and master's in uh, general microbiology in bardas university where i i, I acquired and i got a lot of knowledge and uh, the thirst way where it the research uh, the thirst towards the research where it emerged in bardas university i mean uh, we have a lot of uh, 
very fantastic uh, professors over there, and um, that uh, uh, that yeah, seeded the uh, that seed the research over there. And then I did I went my South Korea uh, to South Korea to do my PhD, uh, and then I'm working here as a senior postdoc uh, in infectious disease division. So uh, the topic uh, we have today is a uh, drug uh, repurposing to combat infectious disease. Basically, I'm a microbiologist and. Uh, the, the thought uh, uh, from the beginning, I mean, from the childhood, uh, to want to find a new medicine to whatever it may be, but I choose to make a as my career. So I'm working here, and fortunately, uh, I'm, I'm working here. Let's uh, move on. Uh, so, uh, as as per the definition, we have, I mean, um, uh, hold on a moment, please. I'm sorry. Yeah, we have we have a lots and lots of. Uh, definitions towards uh, uh, drug repurposing and uh, profiling and discovery there is lots and lots of directions towards how we make this drug into a multi-purpose thing uh, so uh, based on that we have a uh, uh, different aspects and different uh, 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 perspectives towards drug and how we can do uh, but what i do like i'm focusing on a drug repurposing which is identifying a drug how it can be used in another purpose and then how we can develop the identified drug and then make it truer to uh, commercialization the how to commercialize the uh, the drug uh, for the new uses so uh, the drug what it may be a uh, orphan drug abandoned drug so abandoned drug is nothing but uh, the drug which can which is which is in the old use or people may forget the drug or uh, uh, it may be in a poor use or poor tissue penetration but it developed for the good purpose however the purpose which is uh, no, um, not satisfying in a manner so we totally forget uh, uh, so that we call uh, drug repurposing. We took, uh, I mean, based on the whole uh, screen, I mean, the, based on the whole drugs available in the screening, we did the assays, which is called a high throughput, uh, high throughput screen assay. So with that, that, that having like, a, you know, if, if we say drug repurposing, that should be a, uh, like a approved drug or a FDA approved drug. So we have like a, 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 actually um, based on a, a screening, like a 1,950,000 some, some something compounds and then we did it we did that assay and then based on that uh, high throughput screen assay we got the hits based on the hits then we scrutinized we shortlisted and then we took uh, that drug and then that can be uh, developed in a, a, a good manner that uh, it can be applied to a, a, a public so that, that, that's a whole story about the drug repurposing study here um, so uh, as you all uh, heard of uh, um, a tough university in the United States, which is very near to me, like a, uh, like a mile, I mean, a, a one hour drive from here in Boston. So they are very good medical school and drug developing center over there. They actually, they found that to develop a, a drug, which is cost 2.1 billion, that means it, which is a thousands of crores in INR that cost the drug, which came from uh, I mean, what we call like bench side to bench side to bedside. That means a drug we what we have uh, identified and developed that is in a bench side, and uh, after the trials and clinical trials and then approval, then it will go to the uh, I mean it will prescribe to the patients that is called bedside. So from bedside to bedside, it called like 2.5 2.1 billion. Can you believe this? So this is a fantastic study that conducted by the researchers in uh, uh, Tuff University. And then as you can see here over the decades, the drug uh, cost is enormously increased. Uh, and then the manpower, the chemicals, and then the facilities, instrumentations, everything has, I mean, increased, I mean, increase in the prices uh, that results in a very high price of, I mean, a single drug, a single drug, which costs 2.1 billion. So that's how the FDA, they, they suggested that, OK, why don't we repurpose the drug? So according to the FDA, as, as we all know that uh, uh, Food and Drug Administration, one of the uh, uh, clinical drug approved organization in this country, I mean, in the United States. So why they want to repurpose the drug? So first of all, the success rate. And then the difference between the drug repurposing and the de novo, which is a new drug developing um, Strategy. The success rate is, you know, as you as you can see, as you all see here in the screen, that uh, uh, one by tenth of success rate in the drug repurposing, and and uh, 
and uh, no wonder uh, no question or uh, no discussion these are already approved drugs so the safety is well known uh, when compared to the new drug development the safety is unknown because the toxicity at uh, tissue penetration and pkpd uh, and then the plasma i mean plasma availability and the, uh, the clearance they, they 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 we don't we don't know anything about that uh, new drug development however we have what we have with the drug repurposing that new drug uh, i mean that drug available already in the market we know all the data so according to that safety obviously yes we we can we can trust you know, this can drug can be go to the next level and uh, and i, I and, and you all know that you you guys all know that uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, to develop a drug it costs like i mean it costs like a uh, much money and then it uh, the, the 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 time is also a time, it's a time consuming process and uh, uh, antibiotic that need at least 15 to 20 years that need to uh, from the bench side to bed side so uh, based on the, all the uh, all the um, the factors and in addition to the cost wise and as you can see this is very less the cost level is very less because a um, uh, lot of studies we, we can cut short the lot of techniques and the cut short the manpower to 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 skip the studies and then we can go to the next level so uh, based on that yes uh, the drug repurposing it's one of the uh, uh, fantastic strategy and uh, now that is the hot topic and as you all know the lot of researchers and the professors and even uh, uh, the president of this country he pronounced the name like uh, chloroquine hydroxychloroquine and why this drug and then uh, the topic uh, why it is so emerge it's because of this covid uh, uh, sars cov 19 um, uh, drug finding so instead of instead of finding a lot of drugs the, the researchers and uh, they come up with a solution yes we have drug repurposing and then based on that our nih i mean uh, national institute of health in the health in the united nations they are pouring a lot of money to the research right now so as you can see here the clinical trials dot gov that in the website where you can go and see what are all the drugs which is in the uh, clinical trial stage that means whether it is a phase one or two or three or four and how it is and, and what is the uh, 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 documents they have submitted all you, all you can see so based on uh, the data available right now the drug repurposing thing that you can see here that uh, uh, chloroquine which is all, all you know that uh, uh, the malarial drug that drug uh, which can be acting as a uh, antiviral drug that it goes to the infected cell and then the pH of the meat I mean pH of the cells it can play with the pH of the medium that results in the uh, viral particle uh, release I mean it disturbed the release so that's why they, they could the virus couldn't be mature so this is what the hypothesis mechanism behind that uh, and then um, the and then uh, uh, in, in addition to the chloroquine there is a lot on the a lot of the drugs they are proposing for the repurposing however for the Clinical trials, as you all can see, the um, the Montelukast, the drug which you can they can so prescribing for asthma and then uh, uh, chlorpromazine that uh, they as prescribing for the psychotic disorders. In addition to that, uh, what is the my cup of tea is like uh, doxycycline. So I'm a basically I'm a bacteri I'm a I'm a I'm a bacteriologist. So doxycycline is a broad spectrum uh, tetracycline antibiotic. So they using they. I mean, uh, they uh, they are, I mean uh, the uh, the research study that proposes that doxycycline that can uh, stop the cytokine storm and as you as you have heard the, the term like a cytokine storm one the virus infection the core uh, SARS I mean a uh, SARS-CoV-19 virus once after the infection as we are the, the human system develops the hyper immune system that results in a, a cytokine storm so uh, they propose that doxycycline can stop the cytokine storm so these are the topic I mean these are the drug they at present in clinical trials. You believe believe it people that uh, uh, getting into the clinical trial is not that much easy but still they are doing this I, uh, that means that they have potential results or who knows let's see the results uh, that's a much awaited uh, thing right now and then yeah um, repurposing drug to uh, combat the uh, bacterial infection and before going there the topic how we choose our lab um, our lab uh, I mean my professor my boss here he he he's he worked in a Harvard Medical School previously like five or five six years back uh, he was basically a fungal uh, fungal uh, uh, scientist and then antimicrobial fungal sci antimicrobial fungal scientist antifungal finding scientist then he was working with the project that uh, using a C elegance one of the infection model and using that one as to screen the antimicrobial uh, hits so based on the hits they find that uh, I mean uh, one of the drugs alicinolate uh, group of drug uh, called um, 
niclosamide and oxyclonazide so those both are those drug they can actively inhibit the staphylococcus aureus and then what we did what well, we took that antibiotic and we coated the drug with the in the uh, urinary catheter to inhibit the biofilm formation and yes we got the publication then it was it was published in the biomedical materials one of the big book uh, one of the good uh, public uh, one of the good uh, journal they accepted our publication that uh, yes it inhibit the bacterial biofilm formation in the catheter and also um, the other drug ornofin so ornofin is the one of the orphan drugs so orphan drug that orphan drug is uh, probably you may have heard this uh, terminology orphan drug that um, you know, if, if if you say for an antibiotic, it's, that's a broad uh, disease. And if you say cancer, it's a broad disease. If you say for psychotic, it's a broad disease. But very peculiar, uh, unique diseases, if the, if, if the drug that can treat only that unique, particular, very rare disease that's called orphan drug. So uh, the ornofin, one of the anti-inflammatory uh, drug which they can use for arthritis, um, that we, we found as one of the hit to inhibit the bacterial infection. Uh, uh, that means uh, it, it inhibit the MRSA infection, Staphylococcus aureus infection. So when we published that, and then uh, that ornofin that also inhibit the fungal uh, pathogens. And here, here is the one of the very interesting story here. So Francisella tuberensis, uh, you may all hear about anthrax story. So anthrax is a bacillus caused by an bacillus anthracis. So that bacteria, which is a spore former and using as a bio weapon, bio war weapon. Uh, believe it or not, this uh, Francisella tuberensis is also uh, one of the bio war uh, pathogen that what we got, we based on the uh, repurposing strategy, we found a drug called diflunisol. Diflunisol is also one of the anti-inflammatory drug that it can inhibit the Flansa uh, bacteria that we found this through this uh, high throughput screening and we published it. As you can uh, see my name that I'm also one of the part of the project. And then yes, here, here is here is my baby. Um, like uh, repurposing the anti-helminthic drug niclosomide to combat Helicobacter pylori. Basically, I'm a H. pylori scientist person, but I'm dealing with this bacteria, the bacteria which is known for the gastric cancer inducing pathogen. So this drug, one of the anti-helminthic drug, uh, which is comes under a salicinalis group, that inhibit, the, you know, like uh, three years, uh, three years, four years back, I was doing that uh, assays and then I found it, it was really accidental story. And, and you know what, that, that is, that is, a you know, there is a story, as you all know, that uh, the Eureka moment. So when the Archimedes was in the bathroom and then he found it and then he was running through the, running all over the road without uh, any clothes, like the Eureka moment. So when I was doing this assay, so I found this drug in, you know, in our lab and then uh, since H. pylori is my cup of tea and then I was doing this assay and then I did this assay and then I found that, the, I mean, after three days I found this, oh my God, this drug is inhibiting the bacteria. So that that will be a really good story. And that story is ending here, that ended here in Natural Scientific Reports. We published the paper and then that, that story we're going to discuss here. Um, basically, um, drug repurposing that can that can inhibit whatever i mean the purpose inhibit the inhibit whatever or it can induce whatever uh, here um, my strategy my strategy I, basically I'm a, I'm a i'm a bacteriologist a medical bacteriologist um, the drug it can inhibit the viral in, i mean bacterial infections i'm doing what i'm doing right, right now and then i'm going to present you right now and then uh, viral infections as we discussed previously where the drugs uh, can inhibit the uh, sars cov 19 virus and then uh, fungal uh, infections like um, and the ornofin drug it inhibit the fungal pathogen and then we, we publish the paper and then it can inhibit uh, the protozoal infection probably who knows like a uh, uh, antifungal can inhibit the uh, protozoa or antiviral inhibit the protozoa who knows but all we need to we need to explore so we have a lot of rooms so here i'm presenting the room here the escape uh, c pathogens what is escape c pathogens um, that is enterococcus fecium staphylococcus aureus clepsilla asinobacter pseudomonas and enterobacter clasm difficile we need classifying escape c and as you can see the first letter e enterococcus uh, e for enterococcus yes for staphylococcus are taking all the first letter and they form a terminology escape c pathogen um you mean you may even hear of uh, the the terminology nasocomial infection which is a hospital acquired infection if uh, i mean when you when you're going for a surgery or procedure or uh, whatever like uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, dialysis or any uh, uh, any implants 
uh, due to the uh, invasive surgeries, invasive procedure, there may be high chance of getting infection from the implant or from the infection or from the surgery. So these are the six predominant bacteria. The first six predominant bacteria, it may cause hospital care pathogen. So these are these all the bacteria that I'm focusing on. So it'll be a really interesting so story. And then the world need the drugs against these six first pathogens. And then the seventh one, the Clostridium difficile. So one of the uh, uh, the diarrhea causing uh, anaerobic pathogen um, that also one of the included in the uh, SKFC hospital occurred when there is a person who is under heavy antibiotic, heavy antibiotic intake. That person, have a, I mean, and then uh, the person, the, 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 the preferred person who is uh, more than 60 or 70 year age, like he is highly prone to this uh, acquiring uh, the Clostridium difficile disease. So this um, uh, hospital acquired pathogen, I mean, the world need uh, drug against this seven uh, bacteria especially and then the gastric pathogen h pylori and as you know i, I mean uh, no wonder I, I want to say that uh, h pylori is my cup of tea like I, I like this bacteria i mean that's my biggest job i mean my, uh, i like those so i'm working against that and uh, the francella turiensis and the staphylococcus aureus those are comes under intracellular pathogen basically staphylococcus aureus is the uh, facultative uh, and uh, facultative and uh, bacteria and then it and the report says that it is also a uh, intracellular pathogen we can it can get getting into the cell and then multiplies and uh, it can resist the host um, uh, defense mechanism uh, and then there is a other room what we call the anti virulence so um, killing a bacteria is the strategy and then there is a one more st one other strategy which is a dismantle a demantle a dismantle or deform disform the uh, bacteria that means bacteria producing a lot of virulence factors that is the most I mean that is the culprit that the, the, the human getting infected and then seeing the lot of symptoms of fever and uh, even to the fatality that because of all the virulence factors. So if we demantle or dismantle that virulence factor, yes, we can um, we can uh, defend again the pathogen. So that's one other strategy. So this re uh, repurposing that also working with that strategy. And then um, let's um, let me focus more about H pylori uh, and then seeing about what we have. And then why we against H pylori? Why I am talking a lot of about H pylori? What is H pylori? Helicobacter pylori. So uh, World Health Organization, it I mean uh, two years back it uh, it uh, uh, publishes a, a article that um, these are the critical pathogen. The world, I mean, that all the researchers we need to work towards these all pathogens because they are really uh, highly emerging and dangerous. The world gonna face. In other words, antibiotic resistance. As you can see, the priority number one critical so Asnobacter baumani, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and Enterobacteriasis. So all these three pathogens consider critical. And as you can see here in the uh, priority two high patho, I mean a high priority level uh, in this in the third uh, content, H pylori, uh, Clarthomycin resistance. So the World Health Organization it itself says that this is the uh, highly dangerous pathogen that we need to focus. Hence, I choose this one. Why now? Why don't we go for it and then do a research against this? And um, and the reason why the World, World Health Organization published this, why they need this because of antibiotic resistance. And uh, in 2050, the, it is the it is an estimate that 10 million people they may die in uh, because of antibiotic resistance. And believe it or not even in the 2050 we may have a cure to cancer however however we may find difficulties to find a new antibiotic against this pathogen and due to the antibiotic antibiotic resistance emergence we may find we may face a lot of uh, uh, a uh, lot of uh, difficulties due to this uh, antibiotic uh, resistance so that's how that's why the uh, world health organization they they uh, they publish this and then they they request us. I mean, like researchers like us, they need to. We need to work on it, and we are on a track. Okay, let's uh, discuss more about H. pylori. So Helicobacter pylori, which is the. I mean, I mean, you all know that uh, the basics of uh, bacteria, like it's a gram positive and gram negative. It's a gram negative or little more difficult and tricky to treat uh, because of the complex uh, nature and the complex structure, outer cell wall structure, outer membrane layer structure. Um, the uh, gram-negative pathogen, H. pylori, 
this is a helical shaped and micro aeroflic bacteria that is it is a stomach pathogen it is a gastric pathogen this bacteria survives in the acidic environment in our stomach the bacteria it is identified in uh, 1982 and then let me tell you a very interesting story about this H. pylori how they how the bacteria comes uh, to the limelight you know what that will be a really interesting story uh, uh, believe me actually in the uh, 1970s uh, Barry Marshall Barry Marshall is a, um, a doctor a physician in the uh, uh, Australia, uh, if I'm not wrong, that uh, the hospital name is Queen Victoria, I guess. But uh, I'm sorry about the wrong information. I, I don't know. But let me let me tell this. He's a doctor. He's a physician. He he was a he was a he was a resident student. I mean, at that time he was he he, he come he comes under Robin Warren, and then they worked together. Um, he, he, he was seeing patients, He's, he was seeing patients with gastritis and then he believe or he may have, he developed a hypothesis why this gastritis may develop from a bacteria. And then everyone laugh at him, everyone laugh at him. People, uh, I mean, people laugh at him. So, uh, however, he believed himself. He talked to Robin Warren, he's a senior doctor over there, and then they, they, they had a plan and then they tried to isolate the bacteria from the samples. And uh, basically, the, all the basic microbiology uh, experiments that start with uh, culturing a bacteria, as you all know, I, I, I'm sure that you, you guys all know about how to culture the bacteria. So uh, they try to culture the bacteria. That is one of the very simple technique. However, they don't succeed. Uh, one uh, Easter evening, so Easter Friday, uh, sorry, Good Friday, Good Friday evening, uh, before the Good Friday evening, I mean Thursday, uh, he got the samples and then he cultured in the plate and then put it in the uh, incubator, which as I said, it's a micro aerophilic bacteria that, that, that requires only a 5 percentage of um, oxygen. Uh, it requires a 10 percent CO2. That is our, how our human body uh, reacts um, to the, I mean, the grass, the, uh, how it's mimicking our human system. So that's why they culture the bacteria and put it in the CO2 incubator. And then it was a good Friday. Um, it, uh, it was a holiday, obviously, and Good Friday and Saturday and Sunday, and after three days, they, they I mean, um, uh, the Robin, I mean, the, the Barry Marshall, he came to the lab on Monday. He was, he was shocked. You know, believe it. I mean, what happened? You uh, probably you may have, you already guessed that bacteria grows because H. pylori bacteria, which is a slow-growing bacteria, they didn't know that because even they don't know whether this disease is caused by a bacteria or not because at the acidic condition acidic uh, medium how this bacteria react how the bacteria grows they uh, they don't know anything they have a blind thought that this gastritis or uh, gastritis or also they can't can that can cast by bacteria and they don't know they did it in the uh, good friday i mean the, the previous i mean the previous day of good friday evening they culture the bacteria and then put it in the incubator and after four days they came and got the bacteria what that not even end of the story they want to prove they was he he told this story to everyone they don't no one else believe then what he did you can't even imagine he drunk the bacteria he drunk he literally drunk the bacteria he cultured the bacteria and then he just drunk after after a week barry marshall's mom he asked to the barry hey barry i i smell very bad i mean i i can sense very bad a uh, bad breath from you just go and check. Then he got that. Okay, this should be because of the bacteria. Then he went to the endoscopy. He developed ulcers. What he got? He get he he got the antibiotics. He cured it, and then he isolated the bacteria from his sample. And then uh, uh, he did the samples, and then he 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 take intake antibiotics. Believe it or not, in 1990 he got the Nobel Prize for this bacteria. From there, this bacteria comes in the limelight. So this is the very interesting. Oh, this is the hero introduction. You see the very beautiful nature of this H. pylori, uh, uh, transmission electron microscopy, image of Helicobacter pylori, gastric pathogen, as you have five to six flagellas, flagellas in the name, in, uh, in the bacteria. So this is how the bacteria, the story, uh, uh, I mean, starting from, started from. Um, and um, it, 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 it is, it is the uh, unusual thought, I mean, unusual factor, we don't know this thought, at least 50 percent of the pop 50 percentage of the population they harbors the bacteria in the stomach the thing is if you have the gastritis if you have the ulcer then the problem starts and then the researchers they believe the helicobacter is also one of the part of the 
human gut microbiome human gut microbiome so if you have any other condition or complications there the problem starts emerges so uh, it is associated with the uh, uh, gastritis and ulcer however uh, a prolonged gastritis so that's why people used to say that if you have a condition prolonged condition like a burp or uh, a, a GERD that what we call uh, uh, a yeah, reflex, yeah, reflex uh, disease and then a gastric, uh, gastric acid uh, reflex disease or whatever the condition in your stomach please go and find a cue because a prolonged harboring of this pathogen will result in intestinal metaplasia than results in gastric cancer that's why the world health organization classified h pylori as a class one carcinogen a uh, very few bacteria which is classified as a carcinogen and h pylori is one of them so uh, be careful with that um, and if, as we can see here a funny uh, a cartoon the h pylori it is pieces on the human stomach that is ammonia the ammonia is the one of the very dangerous uh, substance that induce the gas uh, i mean um, uh, the, the lesions i mean and because of the urea is the enzyme that causes the gastric uh, layer and um, that helps the bacteria to survive in the acidic environment as you know uh, as you know that uh, ammonia which produce the uh, alkaline uh, alkaline ph that changes the turn the acidic ph into little uh, alkaline that favors the bacterial growth so the drug what we have like uh, omeprazole which is the ppa uh, ppa and then uh, the drug uh, clarithromycin or maxicillin uh, clarithromycin is the macroid antibiotic which is a modified version of a macroid antibiotic to it can to make it survive in the acidic environment and then amoxicillin one of the beta lactamate antibiotic so this is the trip what we call triple therapy for the h pylori however according to the according to the world health organization what we can see here the clarithromycin resistant uh, h pylori is just emerging so uh, that's how uh, the work starts um based on okay this is a background of our story and then let's get into the topic uh, repurposing niclosamide to combat h pylori so the niclosamide one of the as, as we discussed previously it is one of the uh, drug that can that they are prescribing for the tapeworm infections and then we got this drug as a MRSA hit and then i told and, and i told you like uh, i found this drug as uh, also inhibit h pylori and then where it sees the mic level is really really low than the other antibiotics i mean other uh, uh, drugs what we have tested however still antibiotics like uh, amoxicillin and clarithromycin they are really good however since the due to the uh, resistance mechanism uh, the uh, clarithromycin uh, so we are seeing this uh, the drug can be a potential addition and i did this uh, i mean uh, based on the mic's as you all know that uh, uh, we seriously dilute the compounds we seriously dilute the compounds and then uh, adding the bacteria on the compounds and then the concentration where it inhibit the bacteria what we call as minimum inhibitory concentration as you can see here the concentration at 64 that you can see here there is no bacterial growth what we call as minimum inhibitory concentration so that's how the drug uh, come to uh, our study our attention or we, we can't be proceed further and then the bacteria which is the bacterial uh, static in nature in high i mean in the high uh, high, high density uh, when there is a high density like i, I tested in 10 to the power of uh, uh, eight cells number of cells um, it however it it reduced the cfu of a one a one cfu level at least like a 0.50 cfu and how we detect that so when there is a concentration increase there will be a lesser so percentage of cells and that's how we decide how, how what is the concentration that back at uh, the antibiotic that can able to stop the bacterial growth or to kill the bacterial cells uh, and that's how we say and then we, we, we found we found this uh, back we found this uh, drug it can inhibit the bacterial growth and then um, and the next study so yes it inhibit the bacteria and then however what is the acid stability so as you uh, i mean uh, as you can imagine um, the h pylori is a stomach bacteria gastric bacteria and then if a drug can go inside and it should survive and stable i mean it should stable in the at that uh, constant i mean that ph level acidic ph level so we tested uh, until uh, 5.5 that is the maximum i mean least minimum uh, as uh, uh, least minimum acidic condition where the bacteria can grow in in vitro that means in test tube so uh, 
and as you can see here, the claritromycin, the fold increase, I mean, the MIC is little, I mean, up to fourfold have increased in uh, claritromycin and twofold increase in uh, amoxicillin. However, as you can see, this drug, which is an uh, acid uh, stable drug, it can it can be it can be stable and then it can be good if you are prescribing to the condition come to condition the conditions and then um the next level I mean, on the next study if if it is if it is stable in uh, acidic condition and what should be the resistant level whether the drug emerges drug emerge resistance against the drug so how to we how we have to detect so in order to detect that in our in order to prove the fact whether the drug is not resistant against the the, whether the bacteria is resistant against the uh, cannot emerge resistant against the drug we culture the bacteria in the presence of drug for 30 continuous days without any break 30 continuous days continuous supply of the bacteria that's how the antibiotic resistance develop uh, how, however as you can see there is no even a single fold of single fold of uh, mic have uh, developed so that how we can say that this drug can be a good uh, good candidate to develop uh, as an anti h pylori medication and then um, uh, the motility inhibition so in order to colonize the motility is the very important factors so as as you can see here we have it have four locomotory uh, flagella uh, present in the one side of the one side of the h pylori that induce the spiral movement that if the spiral movement can penetrate and kind of drill mechanism as you can see here that drill will uh, results in the uh, getting entry into the uh, gastric mucosa layer that results in attached to the epithelial cells so we found that up to i mean up, up to uh, very less uh, 200 micrograms which is the less than the mic it can even if it is sub mic it can inhibit the bacterial virulence factors that's why can, we can see here uh, uh, this is the bacterial slab the i mean the bacterial agar slab as you can see there is a lot of uh, bacterial growth over there however as you can see here in the 200 micrograms there will be a less uh, growth i mean the swarming movement because of this uh, flagella movement and you can refer here easily how the bacteria can uh, swim across the uh, medium. Uh, our, I mean, our, our, our drug at sub MIC level, it inhibit the motility. That means that there is a less uh, chance of uh, in, in, in infection uh, induction. And then, yeah, adhesion and invasion. So the rule of thumb is, um, call, I mean, um, adhesion is the initial factor of bacterial colonization. So we need to prove whether the adhesion was disturbed. So what we did, uh, we uh, we got the uh, gastric cell lines, and then we in, we add the we added the bacteria to the cell lines, and then after some time, uh, we 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 let the bacteria to adhere on the mammalian cells, and after adhesion, we administer the I mean, we administer the drug as you can see here at the nicosomide you can see one two three four four cfus i mean cfu means four a log 10 cfu that means for uh, 40 000 cells can i mean 40 lakhs of cells that can be uh, washed off or killed from the uh, ad already adhered cells epithelial cells as you can see here this is the adhered mechanism an invasion mechanism this is uh, experimentally experimentally illustrated that uh, how we did so this is the cell uh, we add the bacteria and then after the uh, after uh, like uh, giving a uh, two hours we wash off the cells that uh, to remove the extracellular cells and then add gentamicin because the adhered bacteria uh, uh, in, uh, during the infection can be killed by the gentamicin with one of the bactericidal antibiotic and then the uh, invaded bacteria can go into the so after invasion we add the drug so the drug can go inside the epithelial cells and then can decrease the i mean can kill the intracellular uh, intracellular bacteria that's what we we found that it it, it should be a good uh, antibiotic i mean should be a good good candidate it uh, inhibits uh, i mean it, it er eradicates the adhered bacteria and then it uh, uh, kills the intracellular bacteria i mean invaded bacteria so probably a good candidate and then uh, after after the after the thing, we need to see whether how this uh, I hope this antibiotic works macro I mean um, um, structurally and then uh, phenotypically. So so during the phenotypic cells, as we can see, this is like no treatment. As you can see here, the bacteria, and then you can see the flagella. When there is a four x of I mean four x of MIC uh, administered, the bacterial cells the, it it it, it uh, changes its morphology. That means that it cannot able to retain its structure. That results in 
it cannot be no longer infective. So like that at 4x and the 1x concentration as you can see here and the, the IJ and KL uh, panels, they are control antibiotics. This is the amoxicillin and the, this is CCP. One of the other uh, condition uh, what we, we what we need to see the control level. So it is it is clearly explained in the in the in, in, in the images that drug works whatever but we need we need to find the mechanism of action however before going to the mechanism of action we need we, we needed to see whether it is working or not and then it is fantastically working and it is proven uh, microscopically uh, we did after we did the scanning ultra microscopy making us more exciting about the project and then doing a lot of work um, and then as i told you before about the infection assay uh, we we added the cells uh, I mean, uh, the what we called monolayer, uh, the gastric epithelial cell was plated, and then after uh, after 24 hours, we added the bacteria, and then we saw the vacuolization. So uh, simply as it, as you as we are seeing here, uh, mammalian cells infected with the bacteria, but uh, but uh, regardless, uh, irrelevant. But this is relevant. But I just want to visualize how it works, how it seems. So as you can see here, this is a mammalian cell, and then uh, when the mammalian cell, the size comparison between the mammalian cells and the bacteria. So uh, based on the uh, based on the bacterial adhesion. After addition, the bacteria which produce a lot of toxins. So one of the main two factors, main, main two toxins are called CAGA, which is a cytotoxin associated antigen, cytotoxin antigen. That is one of the oncogenic protein. As, as I told you before, the prolonged harboring of this pathogen will result in gastric cancer. So this cytotoxin associated protein, that antigen, which is the oncogenic protein, continuous injection of this protein getting into the cells, which results in modification of signal transaction mechanism inside our gastric epithelial cell results in uh, metaplasia and dysplasia and results in gastric cancer. And uh, one other toxin, which is known as vacuolation toxin, as we can see here, there we this is the normal cell lines, normal gastric epithelial cell lines, and it is nicely formed, a good shape, a uniform shape. And then as you can see here, the all the infected cells after addition of bacteria, see the small tiny vacuoles present in the cell. That is, that is because of the culprit vacuolating toxin, which is called VAC-A. That vacuolating toxin, which is secreted in the the surrounding medium that get into into the cells which results with, with that will act on the mitochondria of the cells and then plays on the and plays with the signal transaction mechanism inside the cells and results in cell apoptosis and then uh, this is the untreated cells and after treatment so the cells infected with bacteria and after infection we uh, wash off the cells and then added niclosomide as you can see here there is no vacuolation not even a single vacuolating uh, uh, vacuolating present inside the cell that was that was rescued that's all the cells are rescued by the niclosomide so that results in that may giving the clue that why it can be a good candidate because of this all this all the experiments what we have done and then yes based on the uh, upper panel that inhibiting inhibiting the uh, vacuolating toxin how whether it is it, it, it inhibit the uh, toxin entry or it inhibit the toxin secretion so we did the uh, transcription translation studies as you can see here uh, based on the uh, i mean uh, the densitometric uh, assays at uh, 200 micrograms of two i mean uh, 200 nanograms of uh, drug it inhibiting it inhibiting the vaccine translation translation thing so after mrna it, uh, uh, no after um, uh, after uh, uh, dna encoding to mrna so it stops the mrna translation that results in a uh, less uh, protein uh, translation so this is not i mean the drug so we have the other clue that the drug can working with or can acting 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 along with the bacterial mechanism and the inhibiting mechanism antivirulence mechanism or inhibiting the uh, toxin secretion. So that's how we found this. This can be an uh, anti-toxin uh, molecule. It inhibits the toxin as you can see here. And then, so next thing, 
we need to find the mechanism of action that is the rule of thumb whatever the antibiotic you do whatever the drug you find we need to find the mechanism of action um the drug based on the previous uh, previous experiments the drug it didn't uh, inhibit the i mean it didn't kill the bacteria it did not uh, damage the bacterial as you can see here it did not damage the bacterial cell wall and uh, i don't know whether it is inhibiting the bacterial uh, dna mechanism or something a mechanism inhibiting the dna mechanism or rna mechanism however the, the i came up with a different solution that why this drug can act uh, with uh, uh, to play with the bacterial membrane a bacterial transmembrane uh, proton motive force which is the main force that can act with the uh, a, 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 a one of the uh, uh, the mechanism that uh, keep the bacteria still running uh, based on the based on the mechanism of action we have i mean a lot of antibiotics they have inhibit they they inhibiting the cell wall of the bacteria bacteria so let's say say for example beta lactam antibiotics simply a first antibiotic what we have ever called the penicillin one of the cell wall synthesizing inhibit inhibiting antibiotic and then uh, vancomycin cephalosporins they inhibit in the cell wall however we have uh, uh, the other group which is called the tetracycline uh, and the macrolides uh, those inhibit in the protein synthesis they they working with the um, the 30 30th subunit of uh, or uh, ribosome that inhibit in that uh, ribosomes and that results in the bacterial protein uh, inhibition uh, translation inhibition and we have one more one other antibiotic that is uh, uh, the dna or rna synthesis uh, inhibitory antibiotics like uh, uh, quinones that inhibit like say for an example ciprofloxacin that inhibit the dna gyrase activity and then um, we have one more antibiotic like rifampicin which is a well known antibiotic for mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, uh, antibiotic tuberculosis inhibiting antibiotic which results in uh, mrna synthesis inhibition and then we have one more stuff what we call the polymyxin that that damage the bacterial cell membrane so as you know that uh, as you just just imagine the uh, fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane which is the intact membrane it doesn't allow anything going inside the antibiotic polymyxin it target the membrane it damage the membrane cause physical injury that results in uh, the materials present in the cell uh, inside the cell that will ooze up results in cell death uh, so apart from all other antibody we have one more thing that we call proton motive force it inhibit the proton motive force how we we can see here so there is a very specialized probe a fluorescent probe bcf that probe uh, i mean uh, the, uh, the dac um, membrane potent membrane uh, potential uh, probe that results in uh, it decrease the membrane potential results in cell death uh, i mean um, uh, the cell metabolic rate was uh, uh, decreased and then there were no no more infection so that's how we found that the bacteria i mean the antibiotic that was uh, that can work against uh, bacteria by uh, disturbing the proton motive force then uh, the cell toxicity so and uh, all you pharmacy students I, I don't need to tell more about this kind of uh, absorption um, i mean a distribution uh, metabolism excretion thing so that is the other important factor whatever the anti whatever the drug you developing this is the most important thing um this uh, niclosamide it seems to be little toxic however uh, however the antibiotic which is not toxic to the human organisms because of poor absorption and uh, uh, it which is the drug is well known that the drug is a poorly absorbed antibiotic that results in you know if if you are in if you are taking if you are prescribing the drug that will uh, that will act all locally on the um, surface of the bacterial i mean uh, the human epithelial host epithelial cell and the results in bacterial eradication that's what we hope for however uh, there is a studies that are making uh, the drug to more absorbable uh, uh, absorbable to make it available to the human system that to the plasma level that will result in even enhanced tissue penetration that results in uh, good uh, good blood availability level so still the results uh, the, the the studies are going on and here i i really want to present one interesting uh, model uh, which is called uh, wax moth as an infection model so uh, 
we, we you know what we did in vitro we proved the drug is antibiotic and then we uh, uh, we we used a human uh, gastric epithelial cells to prove the drug can eradicate or can clear the infection from the adhesion and uh, always on also the intracellular level and then we proved uh, the, uh, the proved mechanism of action uh, the next level is we need to see whether the drug the efficacy we need to see the efficacy whether the drug can uh, rescue the infected pro infection model from the infection so the the the, the fly uh, as you, and the in the upper panel uh, you can see here this called galeria uh, melonella one of the uh, wax moth model so we, we can we, we use that larva as an infection model it is very simple model and a very easy model and then very uh, cost cost effective very cheap model all we need is the uh, drug, the bacteria, and uh, uh, the uh, the larvae. Um, as you can see here, that in the D panel, a person is injecting. So it's like same injection. So everyone have the everyone have this uh, the excitement about the injection, and we need to do the injection. So before going for the mice level, we can use this as an infection potential infection model, and this is accepting as an in vivo model. So what we did, we took the galeria. And then we inject the bacteria in the one left uh, left last row leg, like, and then we infect the. I mean, uh, uh, we inject the drug at uh, 10, um, uh, sorry, uh, 25 micrograms uh, or 25 milligrams per kg. So we calculated that level, and then we inject the drug. And then yes, as you can see here, up to, up to 8, 75 percent, 70 percent is of uh, infected larva was rescued. That means 70 percent survival. 70% survival was recorded. That means why not? It, it can be a good uh, candidate. So that's how we finish. Uh, we finished this study with the infection model. And then um, as you may also utilize this model, it's very cheap and uh, you can use it in your research. Uh, and then uh, let's come to the <laughs> summary. Uh, based on the drug, which is a low toxicity, as I said previously, because of the poor absorption, our research is going on to make it a good absorbed uh, antibiotic and drug drug. And uh, based on the results we published, after published, we filed a patent and it's still in progress to use a niclosamide uh, as a drug candidate against H. pylori in human. And uh, we need to initiate the clinical trials also. So it's all in a, uh, in a paperwork. Mm, finally, repurposing, it's as I said previously, it's time, cost and the effort saving. You can save a lot of efforts and uh, still we, uh, there is a lot of there is a lot of rooms to play. So we have a, you can see that whether it may be a, uh, it, whatever it may be, a HIV drug can be anti-cancer drug. And, and, and I forgot to say this, this niclosomide is one of the anti-cancer drugs also. I mean, this drug, I mean, the research are, 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 are ongoing and then people have filed uh, uh, in the clinical trials. They are using niclosomide as an anti-cancer drug. So uh, still I said there is a lot of room to play. It's, it's up to you whether you can play or ignore uh, about the work. So uh, I sincerely want to thank, you know, none other my dad and my ama papa. So um, all my gratitude and uh, my, my very happy moments always um, sharing with my uh, father and mother, my sister and uh, my wife and my baby. Um, and I should, I must thank uh, uh, Dr. Lafferia Mylock, Lafferia's Mylock is, he's, he's, he's my mentor right now. And uh, my team, uh, Beth Fuge and Gerald Now and Louis Rice, um, they are in uh, Roaring Hospital. And uh, I uh, I really want to, uh, I don't know, I, don't, I, I really want to, don't want to thank, I really want, I, I need the blessings. So Mardamudu Sundaram, he's the retired principal scientist in Chikri. So he, I just spent four months with him. You know, you can't even you can't even imagine even a single minute can change your life. So my life has been changed uh, by Marudamutu Sundaram sir. He is a very fantastic scientist. Uh, he he's he simply says that I mean research I mean work up That means that that level of dedications uh, he 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 see done in me. 
and uh, also my guru uh, Kim Jong Bae professor in the Yonsei University South Korea so he's my PhD thesis advisor because of him only because of him I successfully completed my PhD and I'm, I'm here because of him and I also extend my thanks to uh, Department of Microbiology Bardas University and Department of Mic uh, Biomedical Laboratory Science in Yonsei University and friends families colleagues and collaborators and I thank everyone and thank you for this uh, session and uh, if you have any questions please shoot out thank you very much Thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome. Any questions? So, good morning, sir. Yep. Sir, uh, uh, the topic is about the repurposing of uh, drugs against infectious diseases. Yes. So, uh, what is the need of repurposing for infectious diseases? Sir? <clears throat> See, the main the main theme of uh, this work is antibiotic resistance. As I said previously, the emerging antibiotic resistance, which is the uh, high demand that highly demands the new drug. However, most you know the bacteria is really they are they are really brilliant than us. You know we all emerge from single cellular to multicellular, multicellular to the multi organ uh, uh, I mean uh, beings. However, the bacteria they are really brilliant. They know how to deal with the problem, and because of that, even and I will tell you a simple story that methicillin, which is one of the uh, first the synthesized uh, antibiotic. Within a one two years of development, the bacteria Staphylococcus aureus res, uh, resist the. I mean, it developed the resistance against the uh, the drug. Uh, still, MRSA is the highest number of uh, fatal, causing highest number of fatalities. So, because of this antibiotic resistance, we need a new drug. However, if we go for a new drug development, it need 20 years, at least 15 years, and then it costs a lot of money. However, drug repurposing we cut short all other expenses, time, everything, etc, etc. So that's why I suggest go for a drug repurposing and then that it's really working. And I'm seeing this, you know, if, if you say for an, an vancomycin, vancomycin is the gold standard antibiotic, which is a lost result antibiotic of um, against Staphylococcus aureus. As you can see, the num uh, one or two is the uh, MIC, one and two micrograms per ml is the MIC. However, the niclosomide or ornofin, which produce like 0 0.25, which is eightfold lesser than the uh, uh, clinical antibody. So we don't know the potential. If we explore, still explore, we, we, we can find a lot of potential of this drug, uh, repurposing drug that can we can cut short the effort and we can reduce the time. It can come easily toward the market. So that's why I prefer drug re repurposing for the infectious disease. And that is that is also helpful, as you can see here, a very best example, Remdesmir. So Remdesmir, which is one of the GILI, G I L E A D a pharma companies a drug. Initially, they developed for the Ebola, and now they are using for SARS-CoV. Within a very short duration, they found the repurposing, the use of the purpose of the potential of repurpose, and they are using. Believe it or not, in US, United States, they are prescribing for very critically ill patients. So that's why I prefer I choose repurposing. I suggest. Thank you, sir. So if you see uh, the, the drug discovery in the field of antibiotics. So last uh, 10 to 15 years, uh, there is no major commercial antibiotics. Sir. Exactly, exactly. That's also. Uh, that so also. what is the reason behind this? So, so, so I'm still so I'm saying that still. Every antibiotic that need at least 15 years of uh, 15 years of uh, time consuming time that, that need a lot of time and then uh, the FDA they have they 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 establish a policy that we need to cross like phase one phase two phase three and phase four these phase one phase two that is fine but phase three which is having which we need to recreate a lot of lot number of I mean at least uh, thousands of uh, patients and phase four which having uh, th thousands thousands of patients that is always a time consuming and also uh, people they are thinking that so 
to get a potential antibiotic, it should be a resistance. It should not be develop any resistance. So the last antibiotic, uh, I mean, uh, what, what I can say, the linozoid, that is one of the uh, oxalidone antibiotic, that is the last uh, commercial antibiotic uh, that was uh, uh, that was uh, uh, available for right now. Uh, since, yeah, because of these lot of, lot of limitations, we are, we are facing this problem. Uh, and then, and also, most of the antibiotics, they are from uh, natural resources, uh, like most of the actinomycetes, mycetes, uh, until, until now, until, until now, we have a lot of antibiotics they are producing from actinomycetes. People still, they are, they're, they're, they're probably, they may be fighting against uh, the actinomycetes, that may be the reason we, they don't get any antibody. However, still a lot of drugs, they are, they are in the, in the phase two or three or four trials because of the policies, we need a lot of time to develop. That, that's the reason I'm seeing here. Thank you, sir. Well, Thank you, sir. Yep. Uh, sir, uh, in, uh, you have told antibiotic resistance or sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So last few years, we are seeing a lot of superbugs, uh, which cannot be easily treated by antibiotic. Yep. Uh, so how to overcome these, these things? Uh, because uh, that the pharmacists are going to play the major role in uh, antibiotic stewardship. Let me so, tell you one story. 2017 yeah. or 2018, there was a woman in the United States, uh, probably she's from Philadelphia or Kentucky, I'm not, I'm not sure about the state. She was infected with the Klebsiella pneumoniae. The bacteria, which is what we got, uh, what she got is a Klebsiella pneumoniae. And then she was admitted in the hospital. Uh, the hospital staff, they isolate the bacteria and then they run antibiotic sensitivity. Believe it or not, there is a 20, approved antibiotics, 26 approved antibiotics in this country. That drug resistant to all 26 antibiotics. Unfortunately, that patient ended up, she, she, she is no more right now. That's what I'm saying right now. This is an emerging problem. This is an emerging problem, very emerging problem. We should, we should take care of this. You know, the, the, uh, the cancer death, the, the antibiotic resistant death will will, will uh, move forward and it can exceed the cancer death in 2050. That's what the 2050. That's what the estimates are saying. So uh, the the main the main reason the main reason I'm telling you here to all fellow students, all my fellow students and colleagues, please ever 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 don't go to the pharmacy and ask antibiotics from pharmacist because overuse of antibiotics and I mean. And uncontinued, um, uh, um, uncontinued antibiotic usage and uh, unprescribed use of antibiotic. That is the main reason of antibiotic resistance. If the doctor doctor prescribes five days of course, you should, everyone should continue this five days of drug. If someone skips the drug within two or three days after they feel, oh, I'm good, I'm good right now. Please don't do that. Second thing, if you are a potential pharmacist, you are a potential pharmacist in few years, please don't ever, ever give any antibiotics without prescription. We need to save the antibiotics. You know, can you believe this? There is there, there is a lot of lot of groups and then um, uh, the, uh, the agencies, uh, the non-profit organizations, they, they say, I mean, they, they develop a, a motto of a saving antibiotics. We need to save the antibiotics. So please ever don't give any uh, any antibiotics without prescription and don't ever get the antibiotics in the pharmacy um, and then please use um, i mean please uh, finish the course if you are taking any antibiotics and then suggest all these things to your colleagues and friends so that's how we should save the antibiotics we have very limited antibiotics right now we have very limited antibiotics we need to save that so this all this is all um, my um, my thoughts about the the question what you said oh, thank you sir so if you see last few infectious diseases uh, like dengue mm -hmm. uh, H1N1, like during the cases uh, we have don't have a treatment of initially but mm -hmm. that uh, our uh, natural remedies uh, which has been played a major role in controlling those diseases sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so any possibility of repurposing those things or uh, what is so, the role of natural remedies so uh, let me tell you this so h1n1 dengue so those are comes under viruses and then that h1n1 we have we have potential flu vaccine here however due to the antigenic shift 
uh, every year, I mean, every 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 uh, uh, the season, we have the uh, mutated virus, and the, the the pharmacy companies they're working on pro producing the anti uh, sorry anti I mean uh, the vaccines every year with the new strains that will save you from the infection. So vaccine is the first thing. Second thing, dengue vaccine. Dengue vaccine still now people they don't have succeeded on the dengue vaccines. However, um, as you said, natural remedies. Actually, my H file, my my PhD, my PhD topic, what I did PhD, to see the effect of piperin against H pylori. So piperin is the major constituent in black pepper. We have a we have a statement in our in our place. I mean in Tamil Nadu, uh, This is kind of a statement in our place. That's a it's a saying or a, it's a word from mouth. So the Paper which is having the very enormous thing to rescue from the infection. So that's that that's what in my mind when I was starting my PhD in you know, 2010, 2012. I took that piperin and then I did uh, and I did, I did assays and I found that that is that you know what that's the first report. That's the first ever report, uh, first report in the world that uh, inhibit piperin inhibits the H pylori, which is the gastric pathogen. That's the first report I published it, and then. Um, it is also anti-inflammatory thing and it is also an anti-cancer um, thing. So that's what I published. So in, in, in answer to the answer to the exact thing, we all need researchers to come forward to explore our Siddha medicine. To say, uh, so this, uh, this content having this single molecule, which is having the enormous value or very fantastic and exciting or terrific uh, effects against this pathogen. So all we need is so uh, in, in in Tamil Nadu or India people they are doing a crude extracts. They all all in the form of kashayam, all in the form of uh, uh, suranam or lehium. This is all combination of things. But what I prefer, I suggest what I did a single compound. So that need a lot of hard work to find to explore uh, what all the compounds present in a single particular uh, particular thing and then we need to explore even as oh, one by one and a single compound single a single molecule and single compound then we need to see obviously i can say that we have our siddha medicine we have we have a lot of siddha medicines all in the form of crude extract or combination we need to explore in a single value that's how it will be go in a big shot uh, that, that's that's my that's my thought Thank you, sir. So you are working in uh, uh, US environment, which is highly regulated market. Uh, mm -hmm. But like India, so here we are overusing the antibiotics. Uh, it's exactly. not, you know, it, it may not be a problem of uh, patients. Even doctors also, if uh, we are going for doctors, they are uh, prescribing the high-end antibiotics initially. So what is your opinion on that, sir? No, I, I didn't get your point. I'm sorry. No, sir. If you are going for respiratory infection, instead of amoxicillin, uh, they will immediately, they will first start itself, they will go for fixing or high end antibiotics. Exactly. So, what is yeah. your opinion? Yeah, what is your no, opinion? No, no, no. Actually, see, um, let, me, let me tell this story uh, in my personal case. My daughter, my, my three years old daughter, she got a cough. I went to a doctor. Uh, and then I ask, uh, you know, as as I'm from a medical profession, a paramedical staff, I I know, I suspect what is the what is the onset. I mean, based on the onset, I can I can say that okay, this is what the infection. I told her, uh, you know, based on the cough, she maybe have like a bacterial infection or in, in bacterial infection, bacterial cough. So please give her antibiotic. And she said, no, 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 we don't know whether it may be viral uh, viral thing or it may be viral infection or maybe bacterial infection. We don't know. We can't share, so we can't say we can give you any antibiotic. Believe it or not, my daughter ended up five days of fever they don't ever ever they never they didn't give any antibiotic for five days i was giving tylenol like a paracetamol and ibuprofen to to ease the to reduce the symptoms however they just want to monitor what is the exact thing so once they confirm wow this is this is what going on yeah because of and then after the examination so they just they just said once the fever is for four or four after four days the fever is still still persisting then we give the antibody so after four days they examined and then they said that oh this is the infection and then they gave us they gave her uh, amoxicillin that means based on the first based on the first inspection based on the first study the doc now nowadays here in in, in india the doctors 
they are prescribing simply antibiotic and then paracetamol and this 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 and then yeah just go for five days that's it that is the main reason of antibody resistance so uh, based on the practice here in this country what i'm seeing here they don't give you antibiotic at the very first moment they just want to monitor you and then they will give you even if if you say that oh i'm 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 very much illness i'm very much facing of this kind of thing what i am facing fatality don't worry even if you if you face that much of thing they have a lot of uh, uh they have a lot of facilities to rescue you however the thing is based on the first inspection they don't give you antibiotic that is the thing what i'm seeing here no, thank you sir so what is your opinion uh, usage of antibiotics in poultry sir poultry so i'm sorry to say this um poultry and usage of antibiotics in um, uh animal uh, in animal industry that is the main one of the one of the main reason of antibiotic antibiotic resistance and there is there is one study that uh, uh, if you are prescribing and uh, if you are prescribing antibiotic uh the antibiotic excrete i mean uh, the antibiotic uh, residues will go to the residues and will go to the ex ex excrete excretion and then that will result in ended up in the soil the soil pathogen they develop resistance and based on the transfer i mean plasmid transfer mechanism or horizontal gene transfer the antibiotic resistance will transfer from one bacteria to another bacteria so in in order to prevent this what what is my suggestion is in the poultry we we, sh we should um, we should uh, segregate i mean we should uh, divide a uh, two categories one is antibiotic should only used to human and antibiotic group that used that should only used to the uh, poultry or animal industry the thing is i am seeing uh, people in the animal uh, industry they are using tetracycline tetracycline is one of the uh, uh, one of the class of antibiotic that inhibit the uh, bacterial uh, ribosomal uh, uh, translation mechanism it inhibits that so if you if you develop resistance against uh, tetracycline even if you give uh, doxycycline it won't work because both of them comes in the same class likewise colistin is one of the antibiotic which is one of the i mean forgotten antibiotic uh, they are using in poultry so if you develop anything like uh, colistin that is called mcr uh, so the mcr gene which is responsible for the colistin resistance however this thing can be uh, can be uh, uh, inter infer interfere with the other antibiotic groups so what i am seeing here what i am suggesting so if you are using the antibiotic should to the uh, animal that should be a separate class that should not be with the human uh, antibiotic consumption class so in if if you follow this we can we can prevent the antibiotic resistance emergence from animal to human thank you sir so if we see that uh, current sir? pandemic situation yeah, if we see the current pandemic situation sir yeah, yeah. there are a lot of repurposing that has been used for the treatment yep so in the case uh, the triple pushing drugs has to be clinical trial uh, we should done clinical trial and we have to use or uh, we can yes, use exactly. as, uh, depending exactly. on emergency sir we, we we need uh, you know that that's what the problem is even even for the this kind of uh, pandemic um this need to be done this need to be done so probably they can do some fast track uh, fast track uh, approval or fast track applications however the fda they strictly mention that they should be go for this level though that's how you know uh, the remdesivir so they are they are they are not giving actively and then the remdesivir their people they are giving only very critically ill, Ill patients and the people we, they can't they can't rescue at that condition so the people they are using that but it is not it is not it is not using as much as possible because viral viral disease is something it's so different uh, than the bacterial disease um, that's how we use vaccines so in order to pursue with the vaccines uh we need to see lots and lots of factor so the vaccines they they deal with the immune mechanism so that is very complicated mechanism um that the delivery drug i mean uh, the, the the delivery vehicle delivery vehicle may play a very important role so that's how the moderna is one of the uh, uh company they are producing the uh um flu i mean of uh, um, uh, sars cov vaccine they are in uh, clinical uh, stay in clinical trial stage 4 um they they presumably i mean they they thinking that okay they can they can survive or they can succeed with that so hopefully we are expecting that however 
even though in this condition repurposing they need they need something uh, kind of a fast track approval or fast track application that should be submitted and then it can go through something like that that's why i'm saying thank you sir yeah. students any other question uh, thank you sir thank you dr nagendran sir yes sir really we had a wonderful informative and a nice presentation sir i hope thank this you. topic will motivate our student and uh, encourage them in active learning in forthcoming days thank you sir uh, let's have a good collaboration in future also let's have a good collaboration dr nagendran sir sure sir sure sir another would like to plan to tamil nadu pudukotte yes sir please let me know sir please let me know sir we will invite you sure sir sure sir that's that's my pleasure and thank you and that's my pleasure and honor and thanks for the invitation sir thank you sir let's have a good collaboration uh, for sure, the sir. betterment of uh, uh, students career sir in future sure, sir. i would like to sir i would like to and thank you all students and thank you all uh, faculties and principal and uh, the moderator dr professor anburaj and i thank everyone for this opportunity i'm really honored i'm really happy and money um, papa or money agude Oh, oh, okay, sir. Uh, I have taken much of your time, sir. Very sorry. No, sir, no, 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 no. I'm happy. I'm happy about that. You know, I have got time for that. Tell me. I'll tell you. On behalf of our management of uh, Arunmigu Kalasnayin College of Pharmacy, hereby I express my whole heart thanks to you and your management for such a given wonderful and informative presentation, doctor. Thank you. Thank We you. will never forget your wonderful Thank you. support. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you, professor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Take care. Bye. Thank you.